Oh, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you came to the uh, Lock Picking uh, Academy, and I think you're going to have a memorable experience. And it's a very fast-paced class, so you've got to pay attention, take notes, and I encourage you to ask questions. But when you ask a question, you've got to tell me your name, whatever name you use that you give to the police. And we're going to now talk about the class that you're going to sit through this morning. And I think you're going to have an experience you're never going to forget. And I think you all know the rules of, the, uh, of this class. First of all, you all paid $1,000 to attend at the meeting, and, and you all meet, met the requirements, I understand, for enrolling. They required each of you to prove that you were convicted felons, there's, there's at least three of you are, or had at least 20 arrests or four indictments on your record, or two of you are out on parole. That's the only requirement I ask to come to this. Now, the other classes we hold, that one of you I saw in another class, we also teach you how to counterfeit credit cards. Here, here's two. One of them is legitimate, and the other is counterfeit. And I can get into this room with the counterfeit one, which I'll show you during the slide presentation. And we'll teach you about money laundering techniques and where to buy and sell fake pot. Because some people ask me for that special knowledge, and I have all the addresses. There's no other educational program like this in the United States. Anybody else that knows what I know is in jail, which I was for many years. In fact, uh, I have a photographer doing this class. He's only on a parole about six months. I know him for years. He is, he's an expert lock picker, so he knows how to do it. In case you have any questions, you can ask him also. During the lecture, remember, you have to tell me your current name and give me the question. And upon completion of this course, and this is like a guarantee, you can pick any lock, 80% of the appliance stores in New York City, and as well as every Dwayne Reed in the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side. I know because I tested each front door myself. Now we're ready to begin. You've got to be quiet and you've got to ask questions, but I want you to pay strict attention. Here are some of the other things about the class. There are on the internet at least 100 books on lock picking on the Amazon. And here are some of them. Some are put out by the government, and some are put out by private publishers. And you come up and look at this later. But you have to look at it while I'm standing near you because I don't trust you. You're all crooks. And I want you to read everything. You touch anything in front of me, you've got to have me watching what you're doing. And you understand that. I also, the Academy also, had published a lockpicking book. And these are free to everybody who has paid the full tuition. You just have to come up to me after class and we'll talk about how to read this thing and how to do it. But it's a lot more complicated unless you listen to my lecture carefully and practice lockpicking. All right, now we're going to start the uh, lecture uh, on the slideshow, which is, explains exactly what you have to do. The Academy has six branches in the United States, Chicago and L.A., some of the big cities. But this, the headquarters are here in Hoboken, where you came to today. And we, this, is the brand, this is our main office where we watch over everything. And we do watch the different ones. You see the cameras up here? This camera is watching me. And we're watching all the other branches that have classes uh, during the day at different hours. We watch it in our home office here in Hoboken. And here's the slide. The, the academy is very careful who attends it. We don't want any, any undercover policemen. We don't want any wise guys from organized crime. It's just simple thieves who just want a steal and break in on appliance stores. That's what we specialize in. So if you're caught, it's not a big deal. Anyway, here we go. The International Academy for Thieves and Convicted Felons. What is it? Oh. The tuition, of course, include all supplies and payment of up to $5,000 for a bail bond if you're caught breaking and entering. That's the only school that does that. We protect our reputation, and we protect you. We know how much bail it should be, and we know where to get the bail. It's the course is actually called for fun and profit because sometimes amateurs do it just to play around with it, but that isn't really the goal. If you're going to learn anything in this class, you've got to use it and steal things. That's, the, what, that's what it is, and that's why you're here. That's why you pay the big tuition. It's a skill. Uh, he, he probably was out doing some picking before class because I, I know him from before. Where were you? Why are you late? The train was delayed. That's it? Yep. I thought you were picking locks. You, you all are going to get a lesson of you've never had before. It is the only academy that guarantees that you will get away at least three robberies and break-ins before any, any, you have any problems. 
and it takes a, you have to practice. I keep emphasizing that. You just can't get the lock picks, which are easily obtained on, uh, on Amazon, but you've got to practice. The keys are lined up to meet the shear line. Now, if you don't understand this, you're wasting your time here. The shear line is the whole secret of a lock. In other words, these pins are not in line with the shear line, so I can't turn the key. That's the whole problem. That's why we're learning lock picking. We gotta simulate the lock. And here it is. Oh, here, I, I did find it. You got, here's the lock, uh, simulate the lock. I'm gonna pass this around, but after class. If anybody has any other thing, do you, 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 you seem to have something. What is your name? P.T. John. P.T. what? John. John. What is that that you got there? Uh, you showed me before class. It's a lock. I was wondering if you could simulate it with a pick. <laughs> oh, you want to try it with a pick? Yeah. All right, here's, here's the rules from now on the rest of the class because you're going to have a lot of questions. I'm going to give you a pick so you can see if you can simulate that. But I want a deposit for the pick. I'll give it back to you at the class. In other words, I don't trust you. Give me some money and I'll give you the pick. You understand my position. There's nothing here that's sacred if you're all crooks. Yeah. Thanks. I'll give you the money back and you can play around. See if you simulate the key movement. Well, you have, you have the thing. Now, what I did is I really fooled him. You can't pick a lock, which you'll see on the slide, with one tool. Even though on television and in the movies, they show it with one tool all the time. James Bond well, did it for years on the 27 movies of James Bond. He goes in and he picks the tool. He can't pick it with tool. You gotta go in and you gotta pick it, and he's gonna, you're gonna practice. You're gonna make them move up and down and watch it until you get to the shear line. And then you're gonna turn it with the tension bar. And the whole point of that is no key is one unit. You can't pick a lock with one unit. Let me give you a key example. And this is so basic, you, you gotta walk out of there with this knowledge. The key has two parts, even though it looks like one. You have all the cuts that simulate the, 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 the pins moving up and down. But fine, now you got it on the shear line. But you gotta turn it. And that's what the tension bar does, it turns it. So a key has two parts also, which a lot of classes, a lot of instructors in this field don't know, that don't talk about it. There's about five settings of these pin depth. And they all have numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Let me tell you what that means. I know now because I've been doing it so many years, the deep cut is a five. Then there's a one, there's a three, a four, and a two. I actually read this key. If I write down those numbers and go to a locksmith and get one of his key blanks that fit in the cylinder, because you notice in the back of the hardware store they got a thousand different keys. So you get one that fits in, but it doesn't have any cuts. It's just a blank, meaning it has no cuts. Then you tell the locksmith you want 431216, and he cuts it based on just my observing this key. Once you, ca once you understand this, Lock picking is easy. All you got to do is get the pins go up and down onto the shear line. Picking tools can be purchased as low as $10 from Amazon, and I sell them for $15. It's a better set. They go as high as $300, which they sell them like 200 picks. You don't need. All you need is five or six. It'll fit anything in any Dwayne Reed store. These are, these are the rakes and the pick. Well, I call them the picks. They call them the rake. Same thing. The rake, and that's the tension bar. And every pack that I have, Comes, most of them come in a shape like this. And they come, this one has about eight picks and one tension bar, or eight, eight rakes. And that's what they usually sell on Amazon. Uh, now you, the point is what he's doing now, P.T. John is really doing it now. He's trying to move these pins. This one is where he's hitting it, and this hits this one, and he's trying to get it up through, that's a spring. So you can move these things up and down, up and down, just by this tool. So when you move these two up and down, you gotta get this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, on that shear line. And once he gets it on the shear line, you can turn the key. Now that you understand everything like that, Gaga, Gaga, do you understand it, Marie Gaga? That's Marie Gaga, I recognize her when she signed up for the class. Do you understand about what the shear line means? Absolutely. The, the shear line is where you have to get all the keys, the picks to go, where you have to get them all to the same line. That's it. Now, Marie Gaga, you paid all this money. You gotta take this serious because you're probably gonna get away with it more than, because uh, when you talk to uh, someone like Harry, he looks like a crook. You know, they're gonna watch him when he goes anywhere near his store. But you look like an innocent little lady. 
you can get away with a lot more than somebody that looks like a crook. So you should take advantage of your appearance. The picking tool is useless. And people are doing it on TV, they're selling you the picks, they're useless. You've got to turn it. And the only way to turn it is to first get it in the right position and then you turn, you turn it. There it is. Now, I have a more illustration of that. Here is the, uh, the scene that you have to have plenty of room to work with. You've got to have both tools in there. So yes, that's what the chart up there is. You've got to put the, the wrench at the top or the bottom. I do it at the top sometimes and sometimes at the bottom. I, I, I should correct myself. There's no one way you're doing it. You've got to generally go, if you, you've got to get both tools in there. So if you can get the wrench on the bottom, it's a little easier. But you can do it on the top also. But it, it, all it does is take practice, and you'll see how it works. Now, don't forget, you can't pick it without the wrench. And I think I made that clear by, by talking so much about it. This is how the key works. Now, here's the side view. Here, now, this is exactly what I've been telling you over and over and again. And the shear, the shear is, I've got to use that word again. And you've got to get that shear line by picking it. So we're doing back what I showed you a minute ago. Now we're going to put the key in. Now you notice what happened? I stuck the key in here. And as soon as I stuck it in, it moved these, these points, the pins, they call them the pins. It moved the pins up because of the cut of the key. See, that's a, that's a four, that's a one, that's a three, that's a one, that's a four. You know, that, that, that model is, a, a four, one, four, one, four. If you know those four numbers, you can get a locksmith to make the key. Just by, now if you can't do it, there's a tool that can measure it, but after a while you'll be able to do it by uh, just eyeballing it. Now what, I see someone raising their hand. What is the, uh, what is that tool that Harry has? This is a big one made for vending machines. If you spray the inside of the vending machine key with Vanguard, before the vending machine operator puts the key in, it makes an outline. So then with this, you can put the picks in and you can pick the lock by spraying it with, with Vanguard. Did, can you, did, did you made that yourself? Yeah. You want to sell any? You want to go into business? Yeah, they're expensive though. How much you want for them? About 50 to 100. Well, we'll talk to you Depending on the quantity you buy. There's a need for that. Because every, everybody has a vending machine and you, it doesn't work like that. It has a round that's very good. Uh, you, you probably should, should take the advanced class. Does everybody understand that now? I mean, is that clear? Now, there's another way of you doing this besides just doing it with the picks like I just showed you. This one, you can, this one you can't buy on Amazon. But uh, th we sell it. We sell this with, the, with this course. This course, I think it costs about $15. That's what it looks like, exactly. So this is, this hits the bottom of the pins. There's five pins. Most of the cylinders you'll find in any industry or in stores or in this commercial building we're in have five pins. And that little bump hits the bottom pin, but you can't turn it. Why can't you turn it? Answer. Class, why can't you turn it? Because the pins aren't lined up with the shear line. That's it. That, now I, uh, that's the answer. Now this is, this is somebody who has absolutely, because I talked before, has no education, didn't even get out of high school, but he understands this, that this is the career for people that are uneducated. And you're a perfect example. You're doing well. Now these are what happens is called a bounce key. Just what it says. You put that in the slot, it'll fit. And now they're, under, they're just dead under the key, under the pins rather, and there's no way of moving the pins up and down. You take a rubber mallet from Home Depot and just bang on the back of this. Bang, bang, bang. And what it does is these things make the pins bounce up and down. And for a split second, it's going to be, you keep the pressure on it with the tool wrench, with the, with the wrench. You keep the pressure on it while you're banging it. And for one second, it's going to hit and it'll turn. It works 95% of the time. No kid, no pins, no tricks, no picks. You just bounce it, but you got to get that key.
Here's the measuring tool that I told you. If you can't spot, you will after a couple of months, you can spot one, two, three, four. But here's a tool for about, I don't know, a dollar. You can measure the cuts in the pin. And you give the locksmith those four cuts, one, four, three, eight, four, and he makes the key, because that's how they make keys. I mean, they can copy your key, but if you don't have the key, he looks up on the chart. If he looks up a 1986 uh, Chevrolet, it'll say the model number, it'll say what the cuts are, 8431. He has a formula to that model car. So that's easy. Now, we go, before we go any further, I'm saying, people are always saying, well, gee, but why don't people get a better cylinder or a better lock? Well, there are better locks that are a little harder to pick, but you can pick any, any lock, except the one I'm going to show you now. All right, this, this, is a, uh, this is a thing that you cannot pick, and it's changing the whole area. It may, it may force you to get some honest work, is what I'm trying to say. You can't pick this. What, what they do is you program a key. This key is actually a computer with a battery in it. And you program it by connecting it to your computer. You put the key in this enunciator. And you now program it to, you call P.T. John. You push in P.T. John. And you tell him his key, you tell his key, he can do key on the third floor, room 816, on the eighth floor, room 2L217, and he can do it Monday until Thursday from 9 to 5, just like the card readers. And then you take the key out, and you go to those doors, it'll do just like it said, but if he comes in too early, too late, the wrong day, it will not work. And all you had to do to make the system work is just take out the cylinder in all the doors and put in this cylinder, which has a microprocessor. And that's it. This has revolutionized the whole art of lock hardware. And if you look in the subway system in some of the cities, like New York City, there are thousands of them. But you have never seen it because Home Depot is not allowed to sell it. You got to go on the internet and you got to type in techsolutions.org or .com. I'm not sure. I don't know because I hate the, hate the idea of the device that you can beat lock picking. But this beats it. You cannot pick this lock. This is it here. It's round and there's nothing to pick. You just can't do it. And there's no pins. It's electronically turns in the back. So this is uh, the, the best lock made. It's called uh, the Tech Solutions. I guess it is .com. Look it up on the internet. And these are available, and they're, they're putting any, they may put us out of business unless we can find a way of beating the system, which we have not as yet. Now, here's the one. This is the one that really scares me because it's so easy. What you do is I picked the door here to get in this morning. But you don't have to pick a door like this. It's called a spring latch, usually on the back door of a house or the porch. When the door slams, it isn't like I just showed you. That's a deadbolt. It goes out, it dies, come back, dies, come back. That's a deadbolt. That, you can't do what I'm going to show you. This is a latch. When I close the door, it, it just pushes it in. So if I can push that in with a, by loiting, you see the word loiting up there. If I can push it in by loiting, just by taking, loiting is from the word celluloid. You take this thought and you push it in from inside here. And when you get it in position, you just slide it till it, it opens. Now you gotta have a card that's not too thick, and if it has a, a block a base here, you gotta get it around. So it's gotta be a little flexible. So this is probably the easiest way if, but no store has it. Everybody has a deadbolt. That's a deadbolt. You gotta get used to these phrases because you're going into the business. That's a deadbolt, I can't do that but I can do it with a, with a, uh, with a slide, or, or what they call a spring latch. That, in other words, the door closes by itself. If I slam the door, this ain't gonna close, but a spring latch will. Now, the only thing is, we did it over the many years that we've been playing around with credit cards to do this loading. We figured out, here's a credit card, and we figured out the best credit card, Citibank, has more flexibility, and it's thick enough to withstand any back and forth. It's the, one of the best. MasterCard is very, very, very flexible, but it, it's not strong. It doesn't last as long as the Citibank. Exxon Mobil and American Express are fair. Discover card are no good. They, they crack when you put it in. So some cards, you, you should get a credit card if you got the credit, which most, most of you don't have. Get one, get one usually get a credit
credit card from Citibank. Anybody have any other comments? This is a plastic uh, plate you put over your uh, license plate, so when you're driving away, the camera can't see and get your license plate. So I thought that would be interesting to share. That's good. I'm Gloria Madonna. Professor, you look familiar. Well, I, I, don't, I don't recognize you, really. Should we wear disguises when picking the lock? Well, that's funny you ask that. I, I do. I always have a disguise. And uh, it's one that people have a hard time describing, but I'm pretty famous for this one. I always wear this when I, uh, when I pick. Holy mackerel, I know you now. I was arrested at the 25th precinct last year for scalping tickets at the Yankee Stadium, and you were brought in for breaking and entering. Every cop knew you. You're a famous crook. Well, sometimes that's good, that sounds, that, that's bad, but I, I, I remember vaguely that, that time you brought you in. But that wasn't your first arrest, was it, Madonna? No. Uh, I, I thought so. All right, I noticed, I noticed in the class today there were a lot of people that are very conscious of boarding things, and I really appreciate it. That happens in all my classes. But I noticed you're always worried, and you should be, about the getaway after you steal something. And having these plate disguises are very good. And there are many, many things available to hide those plates without anybody being suspicious. And I see that, uh, what is your name? Horseshoe Donnie. Oh, what have you got? I have this can of spray, and you spray it on your license plate, and when the traffic camera flashes, it blinds the camera. Have, have you, you ever used it? it? Yeah, I used it. It works good. It works good? It works good. You got to go in with the pick, you got to go in with the cylinder, and with the, with the wrench, the torsion wrench. So I'm going to go in first with the pick and bounce the pins. And then I'm going to try to turn it. But it may be take a while. But it, it may take a second. So here we're going to, then you're going to do it. Now I noticed, I showed you before, I locked it that way. So now I'm going to turn it this way to open it. I locked it that way, which I know how to do it. So now I'm going to turn it the other way. So I put the pick in, and you're going to do this in a second. I put the pick in, I bounce the pin. And I go back, and I use a tension wrench. And just, that means just what it says. I'm putting a little tension on it, and I'm going to turn it. I just picked Dwayne Reed, every Dwayne Reed. And then you know how to get out. You make sure you spray your, your, dry, your, your plates. and you got. Now, what are you stealing, Dwayne Reed? It isn't the best place to steal. You're better off going, well, the only trouble is, I gotta warn you about like uh, Best Buy, they have a lot of motion detectors. Whatever you steal, it's gotta be fast. You can't go into uh, Best Buy and go down the escalator and look around. You gotta go grab what's in front of you. So therefore, if you go to a radio shack, which is where I specialize, they have things in the front. So you gotta think about that. I mean, think what you can get in the front within a minute, and nobody's gonna chase you. All right, now we're gonna do it again, and you're gonna do it. Okay, put the, put the, that, you put that in first. We're gonna have others try it also. Now wait, when you put it in, you gotta make sure that things are up and down. You know, the pins, the pins aren't sideways, they're up and down. You never did this before, have you? No, so this one. Okay, yeah, now you gotta put the wrench in under it. Can you see how to get it in here? I can't see. Under, go under it, go under it. Where's my glasses? Uh, now, wait a minute, go ahead, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh. Does anybody know where my glasses are? Now, wait a minute, you gotta understand, she's having normal problems the first time it did it. I mean, if it's that easy, you know, you don't have to go to this clan. Take it out. We just picked a lock. That is a typical lock. Other way. Wait, wait, I can't see. How do I get in there? Okay, lock it. Take the key out. Open it. Shh. Be quiet. You can do it. I put the pins in either way. Bounce, bounce it, bounce it. No, no. No. Take it out and in. The pin, that thing is in. No. Up. Oh. There you did it. Uh, 
All right, first, let's lock it. All right, now let me interrupt for a second because you're doing so well. Uh, every one of you can learn to pick. Remember that for the next couple of days, and if you buy the lock picks, and you're trying it at a store or in this neighborhood uh, in Hoboken, and you get caught by somebody, uh, uh, particularly a cop, don't get nervous. Tell them you're doing homework for an academy, and this is part of your assignment. As stupid as it sounds, half, half the time the cop will believe you and walk away. You've got to try something crazy because you, you're caught picking a lock. So say something that at least you don't look like you're really a crook. All right, now we're going to lock the door. And we're going to turn it this way, I guess. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You got to oh, Okay. It's got to go that way. Yeah. That's down, that's in. Go ahead. Put that in. Bounce it, bounce it. Holy Christ. He did it in two seconds. You can't make too many jokes about lock picking. It's a very serious thing. And I respect it. I think you do also. When there was another uh, seminar, which was a lady from uh, the Republican Club in Sutton Place, very rich women, and they have a club that meets once a week and they touch, uh, discuss the world and where to put their money. And they had a man speak on lock picking. And again, I make it like I did this class. You're all serious. You're all convicts. So you know, uh, you know what the, the, the can happen. But they, they were very naive. And so they asked, what is the best way to do it? You know, it's so easy to pick a lock. So thinking it's humorous, he said, buy the cheapest Home Depot locks. Buy eight of them and have your super put them in. Eight locks like this. And when you leave in the morning, take your key. Take your key and lock every third one or every second one. Every day, lock different ones. Lock three of the eight, four of the eight. The next day, two of the eight. Just don't lock all of them, but lock half of them or randomly. And when the crook comes, the lock picker is the crook, you. He's going to come and he's going to pick all eight locks. But what he's really doing is unlocking the three that you locked, and he's locking the four you left unlocked. And that's the way you do it. Not only did they get nervous and start screaming, they went out, almost all of them went out and bought eight locks the next day. So you've got to be very careful when you talk about such security like this. You've got to keep it to yourself. It's like a bond among thieves. Don't talk about it. You just learned a skill that's probably more important than a college degree. And I think you can do very well with it. Uh, Marie Gaga, right? Is that your name? Yes. What is it? Yeah, Marie Gaga. Well, what is it that you have to ask? Um, if I get arrested using the pick, um, who pays for my lawyer and my bond? Well, here's, that always comes up. I mean, I tell you, I, I, I'll get you a lawyer, and we would put up the bond if you were caught using the picks you bought from us. But if you have your own picks, we're not going to cover you. But we cover you. We know all the lawyers in New York. They know us, and we'll get you a lawyer. Of course, the best thing to do is to rely on being a woman. Cry and say you never did it before, and you know, that usually works. But don't, do not give the name of this school. Do not give the name of this school. Okay. You don't want anybody to know we exist. And do I get my uh, tuition money back if I get, get arrested? You get one third of the money back. But we use that to help get the bond. But meaning, don't get caught. Also, your first time, you're not gonna, they're not going to ask you for a bond, especially if you cry. Always cry. Even the men cry. It doesn't hurt to cry. Good question. Anyway, congratulations to all of you. You are now expert lock pickers. And the lock picks I sell are $15 if anybody wants a set. Now, the advantage of buying it from me instead of through Amazon, I give you the list of all the stores that I have in the neighborhood that I know you can pick. I told you it's Radio Shack, all of them, and a half of the Dwayne Reeds. But there are a lot of little stores. Even, a, I mean, I, I was going to say a bodega, the easiest, but what, were you gonna, what are you going to steal in a bodega? I mean, you gotta, if you're going to do it, Radio Shack's the best because they have all the things close to the door and they're small and they're easy to get away with and they're usually in the middle of the block. You know, best buys are on the corner. So, but you're all going to learn this normally just by practicing. You must practice with the lock picks. A list of addresses. Well, I have all the stores here. I'm going to give you the list if you buy the lock picks. These are stores that I know you can pick just by what you did today. It's as easy as that.
it is important to note that after acquiring the lock picking skill, the person using this ability always stands the possibility of being arrested or trespassing and stealing merchandise when caught entering a retail store after it closed for the night or entering a private home without the using the owner's key. With those possibilities present, it is best to understand the need of a bail bondsman who is used between the time of arrest while holding a set of picks and before sentencing. And that's the answer to, the, to Gaga's question. You gotta be very careful of, of, of timing. And anybody, anybody else, any, does anybody here feel they want their money back? Anyone? And, I, and also, here, I, I have a list of bail bondsmen that you asked in the question uh, that are near wherever you're arrested. You're the 25th, she was caught in the 20, with, with, near the Yankee Stadium. There's a many of them up there because they get scalpers all the time. Also, remember, as I told you in the beginning, we make fake Yankee tickets or any sport event. Perfect, they're perfect. You can't detect them. Anyway, that's the end of the class. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I want to thank you for coming, and I think you, you're, you got the basic knowledge to really make a living in this field. But don't overdo it. Don't rob 10 stores in one night. Do it once a week. And then call me up if you have any problems. And I can give you a short session. I, I offer for, you, for the tuition you pay for this class, I'll give you another half hour in our office back here. All right, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.